Thank you for watching our channel and our course. We are providing services for proofreading, article formatting and citation management. And there are much more about the services. Uh, for more information, you may contact us on the provided contact details. Thank you. Hello, welcome to the fifth lecture of academic writing. And today we are going to discuss the drafting steps. First of all, you must know that what is your audience and after that you can start writing your draft. You should spend some time on asking these questions to yourself such that you can have some idea about your audience. First of all, you should know who will read your article and uh, what will be their background. And uh, if you know their background, you can have an idea about that. How familiar are they with your topic? It is also important that you should know what knowledge do they already have about your field? I mean, what are the changes are happening in your field? Are they familiar with that or not? And uh, what piece of information do they need at each point in your paper or thesis so that they can understand your thesis, your hypothesis, your research very easily. Uh, we can divide the audience according to the type of the document. For example, thesis, research paper or proposal grant. The next thing is, for example, you are writing a thesis, then your audience may include examiners or scientists of your field or maybe some junior students. And these different categories of audience may have different background knowledge and may have different expectations from you. So you need to carter your writing. By keeping this mind, you need to address all of them. I want to give some tips on that. You should include some specific chapter and summarize the key aspects of your theory and provide appropriate definition of some technical words you are using or technical terms you are using in your article. And uh, if possible, add appendices with further details on specific items. The best thing you must keep in your mind is that you should cater your article according to the least knowledgeable person of your field. And the next thing, for example, if you are writing a research article, your audience may be the wide range of audience or maybe particular to your field it it would depend upon the impact factor of your article what is impact factor basically it is the number of publications in specific journal and how much citation they got in that year so that basically concludes the impact factor of that particular journal for example if you are writing an article for specialized journal your audience uh, may be of the same background. However, uh, if you are writing your article for high impact factor, your audience may differ. Uh, maybe they have wider audience because maybe they are covering different topics and because of that, they are getting more citations and they have high impact factor. So what are the tips to carter this type of things? You should convey the importance of your study in that way. The person who do not belongs to your field can also understand your article. And you should explain that why your article deserves the broader dissemination. This is most important thing. Same, you should carter the article according to least knowledgeable person. The next thing, for example, if you are writing a grant proposal, so your audience may have different background. Maybe some of them are from the technical field or maybe some are from business field, administrating field. They may have different background or readership will be very heterogeneous. So you need to keep these tips in your mind. Use a language that a non-technical and technical person can understand and provide enough background of your study so that they can understand the importance of your work. And you should write your motivation about your work so that they can understand your enthusiasm for it 
and you must need to provide some reasons why should they release these funds for you you need to make them realize that this is the need of present world so that they can release the fund for you and uh, you should also mention that why are you the best person for this grant or for this funding if you are applying for the fellowship so it is very important to identify your audience the next thing is talking about your research there could be different blog for example writer blog a uh, writer blog basically focus on your article become right in structure and organization and uh, you in this blog you will be talking about your research to both experts and non experts and uh, you must think that whether you can conclude your article in 10 minutes or not if you are presenting it to someone and uh, allow the listeners to ask questions so that you can improve your article here is the point how questions can help you a uh, question can help you to clarify the meaning of any jargon or technical term uh, that you may think that everyone knows about it but they do not know about that particular jargon or term so they will ask about that particular term and you will add the background of that term it also provide additional background of the information and it also help to place the research in wider context it will also help you to clarify your concepts so that you can uh, express your article in more engaging way here is the big statement that minor changes can have the huge impacts on the audience for example you have spent a lot of time on your own project and maybe you think that everyone knows about it too because you have read a lot of articles but this is not the case in real life so that you should adopt a language and you should use that language to the knowledge that your reader possesses so in this regard minor adjustments can improve the reader experience and the purpose of the article to improve the reader's experience if it is not engaging readers can't understand your article is in vain so what key adjustments can you perform in your article you can add brief explanations of technical terms in a footnote or add background sections to summarize your key aspects and you can also add some well crafted diagrams or sketches that effectively illustrate your concept uh, most of them you can also express your idea in a graphical abstract and you can show it to your friends and some colleagues so that they can give you comment whether they can understand your concept or not from that particular illustration the next thing is getting the structure right uh, you should describe your work as a story so that audience are engaged till end of the your article so each story has the following parts for example there should be some beginning of the story of what and why of this project you are doing in the middle you are telling that how did you carry out your work so that you can, they can understand what was your appro- approach and how effective it was at the end and at the end you should tell that what is the differences of your studies in bigger picture how significant your study is so key points in that remove unnecessary information that can distract the audience from the main point you can provide the map for your reader to follow mind maps are mostly used to present the idea in a graphical or illustrative way basically mind maps are the graphical representation of organized information uh, so that it can show some connection of your ideas topics or item to the central concept mostly it is used by educators psychologists and other 
for activities associated with learning, brainstorming, memorizing, visual thinking and problem solving. What are the key features of mind maps? It provides a starting point for planning the overall structure and it also helps to organize large quantity of information without the risk of forgetting the key elements. It can also be expanded to the greater level of detail by creating new mind maps for individual sections. And project can easily be modified as you can think new ideas during your project. This is an example of a mind map basically stated the state and gender equality in the empowerment. I hope you understand this lecture and understand the basic concepts of drafting process. Uh, please read this lecture and give your valuable feedback.